let's now examine the consequences and proof of Boughton's theorem, which I've taken to say that the Grundy number of the rook at coordinates x and y is the nimsum of x and y. Notice that the simplicity and brevity of this statement depends on our having started both indices from zero. If we had instead followed the conventional chess notation, in which rows are numbered beginning from one, then the statement of Boughton's theorem would be considerably more complicated. As with ordinary addition, three or more numbers can be nimsummed all at once. Columns remain independent. If a column contains an even number of ones, its nim sum is zero. If it contains an odd number of ones, its nim sum is one. We also notice that the nim sum of only two numbers is zero, if and only if those two numbers are equal. So the winning positions in the sum of a baby rook and a grown up rook are those in which the three relevant coordinates nim sum to zero. In fact, the grown-up rook can be viewed as the sum of two independent baby rooks, one of which matches his row, the other matches his column. This suggests the following generalization of Boughton's theorem. The Grundy number for the sum of impartial games is the nim sum of the Grundy numbers of the individual games. Before proving that theorem, Let's look at a specific application. Starting in the lower right and going around counterclockwise, we have several games. Twin baby rooks, grown-up rook, king, and knight. To be very specific, let's consider this particular starting position. The Grundy numbers of the individual games are shown on their boards. We write them in binary and compute their nim sum, which is 1, 4, no 2s, and 1, 1, a total of 5. In order to win the sum of these four games, we'll need to find a move which changes the sum of everything from g to g prime, which we seek to make 0. To accomplish this, the change we'll need from g to g prime which we'll call delta, needs in binary to be 0101. This delta needs to be added into the sum of the four games. Since we can move in only one of them, delta will have to be incorporated in one of the four candidates. If we could add this delta into the Grundy number of the twin baby rooks, it would change it to RR prime equals 1100 in binary, which is 8 plus 4 equals 12. Looking back at the games, we see that change requires expanding the interval between the two baby rooks to 12. But this would require that the western baby rook would have to move off the board, which is not legal. So this move is not possible. We won't be able to add delta into the twin baby rooks, so we'll need to look elsewhere. If we tried to nim add delta into the Grundy number of the king, it would increase that number from 2 to k prime equals 7. This is also impossible. So we try nim adding delta into the Grundy number of the knight. This decreases that number from 4 to 1, since the definition of Grundy numbers ensures that any decrease must be possible, we know that this must work. So to be specific, we can win the sum of these four games by this move of the knight from 4 to 1. NIM is an impartial combinatorial game played on heaps of counters. At each turn, a player must take one or more counters, all from the same heap. But she can pick which heap, as well as how many counters to take. You can now see that each heap behaves as an independent baby rook. So Boughton's theorem applies. In this example, 
we can see that Blue played perfectly. Historically, Bowden's theorem was originally applied only to the game of Nim. Grunny numbers weren't invented until later. The game of Nim is believed to have originated in ancient China. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it became popular in southern Europe, where it was often played at bars, the loser being required to pay for the next round of drinks. There was a famous avant-garde French-Italian movie called The Last Year in Marienbad, which debuted in 1961. The protagonist in this movie dreamed of winning a sequence of games of Nim, all starting from this four-heap position. As you can see from our analysis in the upper right, if you're starting a game from the Marienbad position, you should try to persuade your opponent to make the first move. We'll next conclude this segment with a proof of Boughton's theorem. This proof will need a lemma which makes extensive use of binary representations. If you're not yet familiar with them, you might want to review the latter part of the previous video on Boughton's discovery. The proof of Boughton's theorem will use the following lemma. If G and H are two binary numbers whose nim sum is delta, then in the leftmost column in which delta has a ones bit, the larger of G and H contains a ones bit and the smaller contains a zero bit. To show this, write G and H in binary and call their nim sum delta. Find the most significant ones bit in delta. G and H must agree in all leftmore columns, whose sum we'll call beta. Then the leading ones bit in G minus beta is in the same column as the leading ones bit of delta. Call that binary place the 2 to the kth place. Then G minus beta exceeds 2 to the k, but H minus beta is at most the sum of a smaller powers of 2, which cannot exceed 2 to the k minus 1. So G minus beta is greater than or equal to 2 to the k, which exceeds H minus beta. So G must exceed H. We'll now prove our generalized Boughton's theorem. Let S be the nim sum of the local Grundy numbers. To show that S is also the Grundy number of the total game, we need to show three things. First, if there are no legal moves, then S is zero. This is very easy, because in this case, all local Grundy numbers are zero, and so their nim sum is also zero. The second thing we need to show is that if s equals zero, then any follower s prime must be non-zero. To see this, we note that any local move will change the local Grundy number by some non-zero delta, and this same delta must be the change in the total s. Third, we come to the hard part. We must show that if s is non-zero, and if s prime is any non-negative integer less than s, then there is a follower whose Grundy number is s prime. Let's denote the Grundy numbers of the component games by the letters a, b, c, up to m. Let the letter s denote their nim sum. We need to find a move which will change that s to any specified smaller s prime. As usual, we'll denote the change by delta. Since s prime is less than s, the leading non-zero bit of delta must come from a column in which the bit of s is 1 and the bit of s prime is 0. Since this 1 in the binary expansion of s came from that column of the nim sum of the component games, those games must have a positive number of ones in that column. Let J be a row which contains such a one. This same column contains the leading ones bit of delta. So if we nim add delta to J, 
we obtain a J prime, which is less than J. The move which reduces the Grundy number of J to J prime is a move which also reduces the total Grundy number from S to S prime. And this concludes the proof.